Hi there, my name is Mark. I'm not a builder and I don't really have any building experience, but I'm currently in the process of building my own tiny house. Uh, here in New Zealand, in the Bay of Plenty. What I would like to do today is give you a few details about my build and then I'd like to uh, talk a bit about the material I'm using and some consideration to be taken in working with it and then I would like to talk about the progress I've made so far and finally I would like to talk about what I have planned for future videos so firstly I'll tell you a bit about my build I'm building it on a trailer as you can sort of see it in the background there it's going to be 8.4 meters long by 3 meters wide it's going to be split level so from the inside I'm making it so that 6 meters of it is of a height of 3.6 which will be 4.2 from the outside and a 2.4 meters will be at a height of 2.4 some of the rooms I'm including in it I've got a, a kitchen a lounge dining area an office a double pull out wardrobe a full size uh, shower a bathroom and I've got a workshop and two bedrooms a downstairs bedroom and upstairs bedroom in a future video I'll do the plan and show you how I've been able to put all this uh, stuff in uh, a unique thing about this build is in order to save money I'm building a lot of the things myself for example I'm building my own doors for the front I only have French doors with double glazed acrylic for the windows for, for the glass I'm also building my own windows and I'm going to be building my own heat transfer unit as well right so that's the build I'll tell you a bit about the material that I'm using and this material is allowing me to build it myself and may also allow you to perhaps build a building yourself because it's so easy to work with it's this here steel sips you can see it in the background there I suppose and what SIP stands for is structural insulated panel you get some with wood some of aluminium but I chose steel because it's uh, cheaper than aluminium and uh, also um, it's so easy to work with so it's easy to work with it also offers great insulation and the other advantage of it of course is that it's light it's about 30% lighter than a steel framed structure of the same size so just to give you a few data about how this material comes it comes in 1.2 meter uh, widths any lamps you require and it has a tongue and groove uh, tongue and groove mechanism I'll just quickly show you that so as you can see this has got one end it's the one end and these sort of uh, join in together so that's how you join them put a bit of silicon in there and it works perfectly so um, the way I'm doing my build is I'm doing uh, 8.4 meter horizontal length with another 8.4 meter on top and then another one top of that to give me the 3.6 meters and then you have the 3 meter lengths for the edges I'll show you how all that's going to work in future videos now some considerations to be taken when working with this material uh, one of them is thermal bridging one of the chief culprits in thermal bridging is this channel now what sometimes happens is people use channel for the base and they put the sift panel inside the channel the problem with this is if it's really cold outside this part of the channel gets really cold the cold travels along the, the channel and it travels up the wall and not only you get a cold wall but you also get terrible condensation during this build we're going to be uh, trying to avoid thermal bridging as much as possible in fact completely and I'm going to show you different ways that you can do that the other thing uh, especially when working this stuff because it seals so well is you need some kind of ventilation so I'm going to be building my own heat recovery unit the way it's going to work is the air going out will heat the air coming in you normally buy these for a couple of thousand but we're going to build one for a couple of hundred and we'll do tests on it to find uh, 
how well it's working and whether we're getting enough air changes per hour as recommended. Alrighty, so that's the material. Now I would like to tell you about the progress I've made. Now, I've only been working on this part-time. I am an electrician and I do work for myself, so I do spend quite a bit of time working. Also do quite a bit of volunteer work. And it has been my first time working on this, so it's been a bit of a learning experience. So my progress has been slow, but we are almost about to get it up, which is exciting. So I got my trailer. Here's a picture of it. And that was an end of last year. That was just after Christmas in December last year from a place called We Make Change. Uh, Mike Pickering, great to deal with. I got the trailer from him. And... The first thing, oh, before I move on to what I did first, I'll just tell you a few details about the trailer. You notice it's only got a few joists. Those are the pieces going across. I'll mark them now. And the reason for this is this material is pretty strong. Uh, the span data that comes from the manufacturer is they say at 4.4 meters, you can have a 1 kPa load, which is 100 kgs in a square meter. The distance that I've got between uh, for, for, for my trailer is 2.4 and so I did ask them about different KPA loads they weren't able to give it to me but I would imagine we have about 2 KPA which is 200 kgs in the square meter which should be fine for the build well will be fine of course um, I've also extended my house past the trailer so the trailer is only 6.6 .6 meters my house is 8.4 the trailer does have a removable uh, dolly on the wheels so I can move that to the right position so that I can get the, the right uh, balance for my trailer. I'll show you how I'm able to move it past um, in, in future videos. Alright, so that was the trailer. The first thing I had on the trailer was I started to attach the floor. So those are uh, th 3 meter lengths uh, horizontally and we just join them together with the tongue and groove mechanism. So here's some going on and I joined <coughs> all, the, all the ones on eventually. How I attach them onto the trailer is in New Zealand the, the law is that if you have a 3 meter wide structure, for example a tiny house, on a trailer it has to be removable. And so to make it removable what I did was I bolted onto the side of the trailer uh, angle iron six meters long and then what I did is I, I got these which are rivet nuts then if you've seen a rivet nut before it's basically like a prop rivet but it has a screw on it I'll, I might, I'll show you how these work in future videos and so I put about I think it's about 30 rivet nuts so 15 on this side 15 on that side and I bolted uh, up on the angle iron into the build and that's how it's attached so that means if I want to remove it, it's just uh, three bolts on this side, three bolts on that side, and the whole house will come off, which will be good when I want to take it for a warrant if, if I want to do so. So that was the base. Once I had attached the base, the next thing I did, I wanted to see if I could make the door, because I, I hadn't made a door out of this stuff before, or I haven't worked with it before, hadn't seen anyone else that had, so I wanted to have a go at building the door to make sure it was possible. And uh, this is how far I got. So basically it's cut out of a 5 mm um, SIPS panel and then I use the capping to uh, make it look pretty but the capping doesn't touch so therefore I will keep my, because the cap is, is I think it's 25 mm the 5 mm is slightly fatter than that so it keeps my uh, insulation and there's no thermal bridging with that door and uh, eventually I will be mounting the double glazed acrylic into the spaces there and I'll make another one and it'll be like French doors. Um, so once I see that yes I can make the door, I got to that stage and I was like if I can make it so I'd move on. After prayerful consideration I decided to build underfloor storage. You can pretty much see it to the left of the video but here's a picture of it and it was a good idea to build this because not only did I build it I'll, I'll attach it eventually but I'll use this to help to balance out my trailer. Um, building this I learned a number of lessons in working with this material that I've applied in working on the major house and a lot of these lessons I'll share them all with you 
in future videos. But once I bought the underflow storage, then I got a lot of the three meter pieces ready. So those are the three meter pieces for the ends and also the roof. So I got a lot of those ready and you can sort of see them in a pile just down here. I don't know if you can see that in the video. So once I got a lot, a lot of the three meter pieces ready, I started to work on the 8.4 meter limbs. And so what I've done so far is I've done two, which you can see them here to my right. There's two on here. Those two are pretty much ready except for a mistake I made. And I'll tell you about the mistake and how I'm working on it. And we'll see if my plan is going to work. And then I've also got uh, two ready for that side. I got some of the angle irons on that one. But it's this one on there and that one on the floor. The, the, those are both pretty much ready to go but I still need to run the wiring in one of those panels so I will show you how I run the wires we're gonna run the wires inside the panel so it's hidden there are a few tricks in running wires with these so I'll just tell you a bit about the mistake I've made so I explained to you about the tongue and groove mechanism but what I did here it is here two of the pieces that are supposed to join together the tongue and groove have the same design and so I'm going to have to try and make a way of making these two join together so that will probably be in, in uh, another video or two I'll, sh I'll work out a way and I'll show you how I'm going to do that and we'll see if it's going to work when the house goes up so some of the future videos I have planned I would like to show you a plan of my house, how I managed to put everything in. I would also like to show you how to work with this material, some of the tools that I use, some methods that I use, some things to be careful of. That will be another future video. Um, I would like to do a weight calculation, show you how much a, a structure like this will weigh. Also a cost calculation and also very soon I'm going to be putting in a roof window. I'm going to show you how to do that. And also we're going to be putting the structure up soon and then I'll start working on the inside, making the rooms inside, building the kitchen, building the, the heat transfer unit. All of that will be in future videos. So if you'd like to follow my progress, see how I do with this build, if you'd like to learn a bit more about working with the SIPs, uh, please um, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified of my future videos. Well, thank you for watching today. Hope uh, your life is a good one and you have a good rest of the day. And hope you subscribe and look forward to you watching my future videos. Bye for now.